Hi folks, this is Nikhil and you are learning Golang with me. In this session, I am going to explain what is the rest condition and how to produce that condition in Golang. Now, in order to understand the rest condition, let me give a very typical daily use case or scenario. Now just imagine there are 10 friends in the room all of those friends are locked in the room maybe that is the escape room or maybe that is the mysterious room the, the games that are going on in the world um, I hope you have watched some kind of movies which are based on the escape room or the mysterious room or the hidden room whatever Let's say all of those 10 friends are hungry for 10 days and now there is a one mango which is given to them. What will happen? Well, the intellect will not prevail. The hunger will prevail because the survival instinct will take in place and all of those friends will have the clashes because there is single mango or let's say any other fruit that you like which is getting shared in those 10 friends now just imagine on the other hand if you have 10 slices of the mango of the or of the orange then all of those 10 friends can eat one slice each and then there are no clashes so this condition or this scenario in which you have one resource and multiple consumers and when this one resource is shared and all of the consumers that particular scenario is known as the rest condition because you have one resource getting shared among many consumers and then there is a read operation and there is a write operation whenever both of these operations are involved you can add another operations as well you can have the update you can have the delete but finally these are nothing but the read and write so basically in the real world it is a mango so if it is eat and access that mango then that is the read and write accessing a mango is read eating that is a write so because you are actually modifying the mango accessing the mango is not a modification whether uh, however when you eat the mango or you cut the slice then it is the modification so coming back to the programming world so in golang i am now going to imitate the similar behavior so that you can understand what is a race condition in Golang and how to overcome it. So let's get started. So this is the program. Now I hope you have already seen my previous video so you know what is the weight group, what is the add delta weight operation and then how to join the multiple go routines together. Now in this case I have the main go routine in that I have the counter variable which is of type int initial value of that counter variable is 0 and I have now a loop which runs from 0 to 19 or let's say 20 times in all of the iteration a loop actually spuns a task or let's say go routine and inside that go routine I access my shared variable which is counter and then that shared variable not only I read the value but I also write the value to this variable so it is read write both operations are involved and then once the go routine is done I just decrement my count down latch or let's say I just call the done so again I have 20 times for loop I have a go routine each for loop corresponds to one go routine a new go routine inside the for loop or inside the go routine I have the 20 times updation of the counter value and if my counter starts from zero then what should be my result value take two minutes take two minutes folks think about it give your brain a chance to actually fire new neurons so if it is zero if there are 20 times I have the go routines inside the go routine I have 20 times a for loop then it is 20 by 20 so 400 times so counter should 
B400 at the end, isn't it? Now, it will not be because that's the risk condition. So, uh, the reason is this counter variable is shared in all the go routines. Go routines are getting executed in parallel. So, that's why the shared variable is accessed in parallel so what happens is you have the shared variable value which is stored in the register all of these different processes have the cpu registers all of the threads actually get to that cpu register so you have the counter value getting stored as a cache into that cpu register into the individual cpu registers so what happens is whenever you have the read operation then it might happen that you are reading the correct value but before you increment the value there might be another go routine that might execute the counter is equal to counter plus one this instruction before you write the new value back and that's why your value becomes the stale and you cannot actually update the counter value as per as per the expectation right so that's why if i run the program then you will see that the number of go routines before weight is 21 so because you have 20 go routines plus one main go routine and then the final value of counter is 390 it's not 400 and then this is not consistent it is 400 now it is 400 now it is 400 now uh, again it is 400 again 400 now it is 380 now it is again it is 400 now it is again 400 now it is 396 now 400 now 400 now 400 368 so you can understand that you can see that the value of the counter even though i run it 10 times i run it 50 times i run it 100 times the value is go going to be constant not 400 which is expected because of the behavior known as the race condition so what's the remedy on this there has to be some kind of remedy so the first level remedy which is very in basic one is known as the mutex i hope in your undergrad course you might have taken the os architecture and as a part of that you might have already gone through the semaphore, binary semaphore, counting semaphore, mutex, uh, synchronization, critical region, all of these concepts are clear to you. So we are actually seeing these concepts in, in Golang and how the programming, the, uh, how the programming actually is based on those concepts. That's what I'm illustrating. So you have this var and then let's say the mutex instance and then you have the sync package and then you have the mutex now what we are going to do is we are going to get this object and then whenever we have a go routine we are just going to inside that go routine before we actually execute this counter is equal to counter plus one either we can execute this for loop in a one shot as a part of a locking so let's say mutex ins lock this is the critical region now and then over here it is unlock this is the critical region isn't it and then i can also do lock inside the for loop but then uh, that will be very specific to this instruction so let's start with this and then we will change it to the inner implementation of the loop so i start with the mutex lock over here let's say go routine kicks in go routines one gets the lock this is only one variable it is shared across 20 go routines so one go routines gets the lock another go routines cannot actually grab the lock they have will have to wait so this becomes my critical region this is my critical region so this is critical region start and uh, this is critical uh, region end right now i run this i will see that this is 400 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 
this is 400 this is 400 and many however times i run let's say 1 million time 1000 time the value is going to be 400 so let's say um i just add the loop outside for outer loop and let's say outer loop less than 100 let's run it for 100 times outer loop plus plus and then inside that you have zero that's it so now you are running this hundred times now each time you are making counter as zero and then uh, let me just uh, comment these lines and now let me run uh, ah, final value of counter is uh, one four zero zero no 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 not, not this I need to add it out here code beautify my code okay so let's run it now you'll see that each time i run the code each time operation is giving me 400 as the output if i change it to thousand then also you'll see that each time i get the result as 400 if i just remove this code of mutex for the critical reason then you will see that my my output majority times it is 400 but then it is mixed you can get anything it depends where when your routines are scheduled and how do they run in a line with each other um, okay and as i said earlier if i just add the lock inside the for loop if i change my critical region let let it be very specific to the instruction that I want to execute in a critical region then what let's see what happens again you will see that every time my output is 400 because it does not really matter whether I am adding the critical region inside a for loop or outside of the for loop what matters is whether my instruction which is actually reading the counter and writing the value back to the counter because over here when it comes to the lower level programming it is counter value is getting read and then you are writing back the value so these are the two instructions so that's why you have to have the lock over here so that you can execute them the critical region without any clash so that's how you can get rid of the rest condition and I hope by now you understand how important it is to address this issue, understand what is the rest condition, how the uh, one resource is shared across multiple consumers and then how this can lead to the big issue in the enterprise level applications. That's it for now. See you in the next session.